Hi and welcome to Molimu Kipepeo with me, Jasmine Ombwe. This week we continue focusing on October 10th and what we commemorate on that day from another angle. Last week we handled various ways that we preserve our culture and this week we shall cover mental health. This is not a new topic of discussion on this platform. Mental Health Day is observed every 10th of October and that's why today we shall focus on mental health and the workplace as several companies work on strategies to be introduced in this last quarter of the year. Stay tuned and prepare yourself to learn a thing or two. My guest today is my former schoolmate from high school. When I was in Form 1, he was in Form 4. And for some reason, I found him to be the nicest yet roughest Form 4 in our school. This is why he was tough. But he would come to our class very early each morning to teach us mathematics. And it was out of his own free will. That kind of character was rare in our school. And for me, that's when I knew he would have a very bright future ahead. And indeed... That came to pass. I have had the privilege of being trained by him under the topic of our discussion today. And that is why I felt that he was best suited to be my guest today. Hi Ken, please briefly introduce yourself to our listeners. Hello, my name is Ken Peter Monua. I'm a psychologist and a human resource consultant. I work for Expert Explainers a private limited company based in Nairobi. So how important is it for employers to ensure that their employees' mental health is safeguarded both at home and at work? It's always said and confirmed that your mental health is your mental wealth. It's very, very important for us to take care of our mental health in the homes, places of work, when we are transiting from one place to another. Because generally, if you're a teacher, a medic, um, a a civilian or an armed force uh, person, we go through a lot of stress and duress during the day. And it's very, very important for you to take care of your stressors so that when you get home, that is not the place you go and unwind bringing out the stressors in you, but that's the place that you go unwind and relax. Uh, Many a times we see the homes being taken as collateral damage since we are unable to take care of ourselves at our places of work, where we go through a lot of tension, pressure, a lot of duress. Duress is negative stress. And if you are unable to take care of yourself, then you will find yourself having collateral damages in your children, your spouses, um, the domestic uh, workers, um, because they they are just as innocent, but maybe finding you at not your best times. And if they trigger you, then you find yourself outbursting towards them. What is the ideal workplace setting that, in your opinion, promotes a healthy mental state for employees. An ideal workplace is where one has a probability of sitting down with your supervisor, with your juniors, with your peers, having a discussion of what is uh, stressing you, what you're going through, that you can be able to pour your heart out and be able to uh, talk to the people who are your stressors um, uh, or giving you pressure and you can be able to sit down, analyze what is going on, look at where you have come from, where you're currently at and if you continue with the current situation as it is, how it's going to have an effect on you. So an ideal work situation um, is a place where one can be able to sit down and talk, pour your heart out and do not feel judged. How do you handle an employee who has been diagnosed with a mental or mood disorder? How do you help them cope with work and their mental state without interfering with their duties? The best way to deal with your colleague who has been diagnosed with a mental health issue is understanding. Uh, many a times we do not know how to handle people. We like sympathizing with them, showing them as if this, um, this thing will put them down, being extra careful with them. 
relate well with them, but understand them, especially if they are having mood swings and mood disorders, anxieties. Uh, sit down with them, ask them how they will be, uh, they will wish to be assisted when such a situation happens or their anxiety level goes up. Um, did the doctor say anything about putting them under pressure or or such? Um, it would also be ideal if you could research more about mental health issue that your colleague is going through. Um, make Google your friend and look at how can you be able to assist your colleague uh, when they are going through this. Um, at home, it would also be ideal if the entire family can be part of the healing process. Uh, sit down together and ask yourself uh, what brought you to where you are at and how you can, as a family, help you, one of you uh, to get out of this issue. So how can you tell that one needs help without having them coming over to tell you, you know, I'm going through this or I'm suffering, I'm not having enough sleep. I'm going through this dark time in my life and I don't know what exactly it is. So if they haven't told you, how can I actually tell that there's something wrong and this person needs help? If you've worked well with a person, you would know when they are okay and when they are not okay. Um, if you know people well, I, I know we spend most of our time in the workplaces um, and most of the times we are able to tell or detect when our colleagues are not doing well, uh, when they start becoming antisocial, when whatever used to excite them cannot excite them anymore, when you look at them and they are not uh, ready to have a conversation, when uh, your presence seems to be a bother as opposed to the past to them. These are the telltales uh, when they start withdrawing themselves and when they start um, uh, being too strict on time, uh, like uh, an eight to five, it's an eight to five for them. They do not want to do an extra mile. Maybe they are suffering from burnout and they feel like um, they want to quit their jobs and they start bad mouthing the company. These are telltales. Don't overreact. Uh, maybe the person just needs some time. You sit down with them and uh, talk to them and find out if things are okay. If they are not okay, what can be done? So finally, Ken, please end with your parting shot. What is your parting shot? What is this one thing that you want us to take home from our discussion today? And then also end by letting our listeners know where they can find you for more information in regards to the services that you offer. I'd like to urge all of us to take some mental health assessment on ourselves, invite a mental health expert um, to your company, uh, look at uh, how you can be assisted together, um, how a company can move uh, from one place to the other. We are coming from a COVID situation where issues of workplace were becoming tougher and tougher, but it could be ideal if all of us could take care of our mental health. Uh, we need to know that it's okay not to be okay, and we have of professionals out here ready to talk to you uh, to assist you through this, uh, this journey. Uh, if you would want to get in touch with me, you can uh, go to my Facebook account, Expert Explainers Management Consultant, like uh, the page, uh, message me, or you can check my um, Instagram, Ken Washiro, or you could give me a call. My, my phone is in the public domain, 0721 89, and I'm ready to assist you. If I'm not able to reach out to you, I can be able to get you somebody who can assist you wherever you are. Thank you. French philosopher and writer Jean-Paul Sartre was announced the winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature on October 22, 1964. However, he became the first person to decline the award. While most consider the Nobel Prize a major honor, two winners, him being the first, have voluntarily declined the award. In 1974, ten years later, he was joined by Le Duc To, who, with Henry Kissinger, shared the Peace Prize for their work to end the Vietnam War. Do you know why he said no? He said that peace had not yet been established. Now you know. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Molly Muki Pepeo. Please like our Facebook page for brand new episodes every week. Remember to like and share this episode with everyone you know. I'm Jasmine Nomboy. Let's meet next week for another learning experience. Ciao!